What's going on guys? Wei from Revolution. I'm going to start with my traditional greeting, which is an international one, which is uh, hello, bonjour, ni hao, uh, shalom, and salam alaikum habibis. How are you? Oh, I forgot also ciao ragazzi for our Italian friends. Uh, how are you? Today I'm going to be sharing an unboxing video with my new um, Omega Speedmaster. It is the much coveted Silver Snoopy 50th anniversary watch. But um, in order to unbox this watch correctly, uh, I had to have the right watch on my wrist. And so I'm wearing, of course, its predecessor, the Silver Snoopy, as it's called in uh, common parlance, uh, but it's actually the Silver Snoopy or celebration for Apollo 13 45th anniversary watch, right? This watch is, of course, uh, something of a phenomenon in, in the after sales market. It was a watch that cost uh, just a little over 8,000 US dollars. And from what I can see now, when you look at the, um, the secondary websites, it looks like it's going for between 45 to 50,000 dollars. So, um, pff, wow, amazing. The thing about this watch in my box, however, is I kind of feel that this watch is also going to have a massive secondary value. Now, unlike the first watch, which is a limited edition watch, this is a limited production watch, which means Omega is going to keep making it for a couple of years, which I think is actually kind of cool. I think one of the problems with limited edition watches is people, a lot of people want to buy them, right? And for those guys who don't get to have them, um, they have to go to the secondary market. And I don't know, there's also sometimes a feeling of dissatisfaction. So. Uh, for example, I went to the Singapore boutique to pick up this watch and I said, hey guys, how many people do you have on the wait list? And they said, way we've got between two and 3,000 people. And I was like, dude. So yeah, uh, and I think they're, they're not gonna get that many watches. Uh, I think it's something like five or six watches a month. So if you kind of do the math, it's going to be a long wait. However, they are willing to put you on the wait list, which I think is really cool. It's something I applaud um, uh, Omega for and the Swatch Group for. I know it was really important to Randall Eichelman, and he was always like, you know, every time I got on the forums, people were yelling about how this watch is too limited, that watch is too limited. So this time I've made it for the people, and I think it's a great move. So. Uh, without uh, any more uh, delay, let's actually get into the watch. And, you know, I think we're going to discover some really interesting things here. Okay, so let's open this up. And there you go, all right? Pretty cool. So first thing I want to show you is, of course, the artwork on the bottom. This is uh, Eyes on the Stars. All right, and really cool here. First beagle on the moon. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I like, I like how, like, uh, the, apparently, I guess the tradition was as the astronauts walk out, they're touching Snoopy on the nose, right? And it's a little bit of a story about, you know, the Silver Snoopy Award, about Omega's relationship with NASA, um, about the fact that very, very few external suppliers, I think it's something like less than 2%, actually received this award, and of course that this award was given for, I would probably say a combination of sort of long-standing service to uh, NASA and to the uh, astronaut community, but most in particular to uh, for Apollo 13. Now everyone that's seen that movie that was directed by Ron Howard knows that on Apollo 13, they suffered a massive uh, electronic failure, and as a result, uh, the crippled craft had a real danger of not being able to return to Earth. They decided they would slingshot around the moon's gravitational field and head back to Earth, but there was one problem. The problem was, if they hit Earth at an angle that was too steep, they would burn up on re-entry, and if they hit Earth at an angle that was too shallow, they would skip off the atmosphere, and they only had one shot to do it. So they used their Omega Speedmaster at the time, uh, the crucial 14-second engine burns that allowed them to angle the spacecraft perfectly so they could make it back home. And upon that incredible feat, uh, Omega was awarded the Silver Snoopy Award. Much deserved, I guess. Now we're gonna take out this. And it's cool that it's kind of in this Kodora mission case. And it's got, of course, the Silver Snoopy badge here. And then you open it up and boom, there's your Silver Snoopy, right? Uh, and it is a hell of a watch. And what you have is uh, an Omega Speedmaster now equipped instead of the 1861 with the 3861, which it comes with a coaxial escapement and also, if I'm not mistaken, a silicon hairspring. Uh, so it's really kind of the ultimate upgrade to the traditional 1861 caliber. But the immediate impression I get, and you know, I have to say this color of the blue for the ceramic bezel, uh, is absolutely stunning, is that they're a little bit distinct in terms of their personalities. I would say that the um, Apollo 11 Silver Snoopy 45th anniversary is a very maximalist watch. It's got so much going on. It's got the, you know, 14, what can you do in 14 seconds uh, along the seconds track. It's got Snoopy sitting on his uh, doghouse and kind of, he's luminous, of course. Uh, it's got 
a lot of kind of bells and whistles, whereas the immediate impression I get off of the 50th anniversary watch is that it's very different from its predecessor, the Silver Snoopy 45th anniversary. And I know that for Reynold and Greg Kissling and Jean Pascal over at Omega and the entire team, that was something very important. They wanted to simultaneously create a watch that had a completely different character, and in some ways kind of up the game, but I'll talk about the upping the game dimension a bit later. Let's look at just the front of the watch and see what we think. So it's a beautiful watch. Um, it, the colorway is stunning. So it's got a blue enamel bezel, which is perfectly matched by the blue accents on the dial. And I should mention that the dial is crafted from solid sterling silver, which is really cool. Uh, then you see the laser engraving on the subdial at 9 o'clock of Snoopy reaching out into the stars. It's quite a stunning watch. But of course, everyone's excited to know about the action on the back of the watch. So let's start the chronograph and see what happens in terms of the animation on the back. So, obscured by the moon right now, there you have Snoopy. And Snoopy now is traveling around the Earth. And he's flying over this sort of beautiful night sky. Uh, and he's headed back to be obscured by the moon once again. And it's really this animation that everyone found so charming, right? This is, uh, I think, the watch that I said was the most uplifting watch of 2020. And, and, you know, this was a year where everyone was really looking for reasons to feel uplifted. And for whatever reason, this animation of Snoopy, like, you know, flying through space in his command module was something that just really connected with us in a really visceral way. I think for us, it kind of reminded us of our childhood, but also connected with the story of Apollo 13, which is really about human courage and resilience. So to uh, Reynold Eichelman, to all the guys at Omega, you know, really bravo. This watch, uh, it's a watch that really lifted our spirits in 2020. And I think it's one of the reasons why everyone all kind of went crazy for it as well. So bravo. So as we know, this is a blue ceramic bezel on this new watch. And of course, you'd be tempted to ask, well, is it just the same blue ceramic bezel that appeared on previous Speedmasters, such as the CK2998 Blue? Well, um, as it happens, I have that watch just here. So let's take a look um, at the watches side by side. And you'll see that actually the colors are subtly different. I would say the color on the CK2998 Blue is much more of a traditional navy blue. And the color on the new watch is much more vibrant somehow. Um, more of a royal blue. And you can see that also reflected in the colors of the subdials as well. So I think it's really nice also that when Omega does another blue ceramic bezel, it does it with a completely different colorway. And that's again a testimony to their attention to detail. Now, one thing I want to talk about the watch, which I think is really interesting, is the following. What I realize actually is that the case of this new Snoopy watch is completely different from the case from any other Speedmaster that's come before it. And when you look at the profile of the watch, you'll notice that the lugs angle down much more steeply as you come in contact with the Kodura strap. And for me, you know, I think that that's because of the animation module that's in the back of the watch, the watch sits higher off the wrist. And Omega, of course, wouldn't be satisfied with just putting the standard case on that, so they created an all-new case where the lugs, which are the traditional Speedmaster Lyre lugs, uh, angle down more steeply as you get to the integration of the strap so that it conforms to the wrist perfectly. So if you're looking at the watch frontally as well, you'll notice immediately like the Lyre lugs, as they hit the strap, they have this kind of almost like eagle beak you know, downward slope to them, which is really interesting and completely different from any other Omega Speedmaster. I'm just going to take off the uh, 45th anniversary Silver Snoopy as well, which I've got, of course, on my Speedy Tuesday NATO. It is, after all, Speedy Tuesday. And even when I look at these two watches, you'll see, and I'll show you this in close-up, that the, the profile of the lugs is quite different, and you see that immediately. Now, what's really interesting, however, is that the thickness of the watches is exactly the same. So the thickness of both watches is 15 mm. They're both of the watches also have a box sapphire crystal instead of the Hesalite acrylic uh, crystal that you'll find on some of the other uh, more historic watches. But what's interesting is that it seems as if the box crystal on the new watch also uh, sits a little bit higher off of the case. Um, so maybe there's a little difference in terms of its integration into the bezel. I don't know. All I know is um, I love this watch and I wanted to wear it on the, the flat link bracelet that was launched last year with the uh, uh, 50th anniversary Apollo 11 watch, the steel watch. And they, they tried to put it on at the service center, but it didn't fit somehow, which which was how I, I kind of you know, came about the discovery of this case being a completely unique case in the Omega Speedmaster lineup. Um, hopefully I'll be able to solve that next year, but in the meantime, it's just really cool that, that at Omega decided to make a unique case just specifically to this watch because they, they had this animation in the back and they wanted the watch to sit on your wrist perfectly, which it does incidentally. You know, when, it's particularly apparent when you hold this case next to 
So this watch, which is the uh, Ultraman Speedy Tuesday 2, which was launched in 2018, and you look at the profile of the two watches and you see that the case is much thicker on the new watch. And the, the, yes, the shape of the lugs is completely different. Um, what's interesting, however, is if you take a pair of calipers and measure the case thickness of a more traditional Speedmaster, such as this um, Speedy Tuesday 2 Ultraman powered by the caliber 1861, and then you take that same pair of calipers and measure the new watch, you'll find something very interesting. Now with the animation on the back of this watch, you would imagine it to be much thicker, but in fact it's not. So this is 14 mm in thickness, and this is 15 mm in thickness, meaning there's only a difference of one mm, which I find remarkable so that Omega was able to take this incredible animation, all the mechanism behind that, and put it all inside that space of one mm, which is pretty remarkable and a testimony to Omega, like when they do things, they do it correctly, right? So that's essentially it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. And if you've got one of these, wear it in good health. And if you don't have one yet, uh, you can come see mine, which will be at the Temple of Speed here in uh, the Singapore Revolution Watch Bar. Uh, wishing everyone a great Speedy Tuesday.